Hello and welcome to what will be the last tutorial that deals with the cave and with scenery in general. Um, after this I'll be moving on to more technical things such as zones, the EBE system, uh, scripting, things like that. Um, so this video may creep past the 10, 50, 10 to 15 minute mark I usually try to keep to but I think it'll be good to finish off the cave so we can move on to other things. From last time, we identified this rock from the stock resources. Now, I like this rock because it's a nice size, it's a nice texture, and there's 10 more that share a similar texture. So we're going to use that to build the roof. Um, these rocks can be found in the stock asset library, under scenery, and this rock's one, three rock nine, and 10 is near one because it's um, alphanumeric sorting. So, Let's pop him there for now. now. Another reason I want to use these rocks is because they have a flat underside. So if you select this rock and extract it, and then turn it, turn it around on its um, axes, you'll notice that it's got very flat. This can then be placed into the scene where the flat side of the rock will be on level with the top of the mountain, thereby creating a nice roof type surface and because we've got 10 different types of rocks there should be enough variation to make it look unique and interesting uh, but before I do that I want to show you a feature of the entity that will be very useful in this situation this case which if you take a rock and you place them down and then extract them onto your cursor you can rotate by pressing the R key which rotates in 45 degree increments if you hold shift, it will rotate in single, de increment, single degree increments. Um, and you can also, of course, rotate using the widget. What you can also do, using the number keys 1 through 6, you can rotate the object at a fixed set of degrees, in this case 45, along all its axes. So the 1 key will rotate it along what looks like the X. Number 2... We rotate it the other way. Three looks like the Y, and four is the other way, which means five and six will rotate along the Z. Now, using these, you can rotate at any angle, in any degree, in a very fixed way. So, if like me, you want to turn these perfectly upside down, simply hitting the one key four times will make it a perfect 180 degree upside down, ready for roofing. And so, with that knowledge, I'm going to bring in all the rocks, place them upside down in the scene, and then populate this roof. So, if you take rock 10, make it upside down, and bring it into the scene. Rock 2. Bring it into the scene. Turn them upside down and just plunk them there. The reason I'm bringing them all in is because I intend to extract and place several instances of the rocks. And so by having them all in the scene ready, I can focus on building the roof rather than um, wall corralling the resources. He's big. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. He'll have to go on the edge. He'll. You'll get in the way of things. Ah. Now, here's an interesting case. Um, I'll just pop delete him now. When an entity in Game Guru goes below the surface of the terrain, it is shown as a bounding box, as you've just seen. So, Rock 6, if placed upside down, is completely under the serene. Under the. Excuse me, under the terrain in the scene. Uh, we can place him down and he will still exist in the scene, but you'd have to very carefully select the bit you can see or use a bounding box to select him to bring him back out into the visible. So that's something to watch out for. If you see a green bounding box, something's under the floor. So we'll carry on with the rocks, bringing them into the scene. Number eight. Bring him in. 
Uh, rock number nine. Bring him in. Two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we've missed one. I think it was this one. Yep. So I'll bring him upside down. And bring him just there for now. Um, hmm, good. So, before I begin, I will save so as not to lose any work if I make a cataclysmic mistake. So we save the level, and then we can make a start. The first thing I'd like to do is take the big rocks and place them in uh, positions where they won't interfere with the player when the player is going through the cave. And by that I mean this guy over here is huge. If I placed him, let's say, here in the middle, when the player comes into the cave, he's going to be, um, he can't get up the ramp. So, because I want to use all the rocks, I'm going to place him at the edge where the player wouldn't go. So I'm going to put him over here. So he'll serve as a kind of um, a low um, outcropping of rock rather than a stalactite. Um, I will not use stalagmites in this cave. I don't think it's that kind of cave. This doesn't seem limestone. -y. This is just a rocky cave. So I'll use this guy as well because he's quite big. And I'll put him over there. I say him. Um, it might be a girl rock. We don't know. So I'll put that there. And um, put him there. Now what I'd like to do is, I'd like to just leave small cracks in between the rocks like this here. Because it will allow light to shine into the cave from the outside of the scene. But not so much that it ruins the effect of a nice enclosed cave. So I'll just continue... Oops. Continue placing the rocks, positionally, until I've covered the entire ceiling, like so. And so, I will cover the entire roof in rocks. Now, if I hold down the shift key, and then hold down the R key, I'll set this guy spinning. And now I can place, and place, and place... I'm just place things down in a little bit more random fashion than I could otherwise. And if I do the same with several other smallish rocks, it'll be easier to get the whole ceiling filled in because I can go in later and fill in the small gaps that remain. Now what you see here is a bit crazy because my mouse is detecting all these different levels and it's trying to adjust and figure out where I am. It just can happen if your scene's a bit crowded like this. Um, but that's why I'd recommend using the widget tool for the finer, more precise um, controls. So you can pop it down. Oops, I had shift hold of. And then drag it into the place you want. So it's a mixture of the two. When there's not much going on, it's easy to use. You just extract in place but when it gets a little bit busy if you want a better control over what's going on the widget tool is probably your best friend and these are nice little broken ones I can put these into like the smaller holes like this I'll put one there and one there and oh yes one here in fact one there as well Still in my cursor. <laughs> I had shift held down. But the last one, there. So, there's still, as you can see, holes in the cave roof. That's a bit too big, so I'll take this one and I'll put it down here. And I'll put another one here. And any more really big holes? Yeah, that's a bit big, so maybe take that one and just put that there. I'd like to fill that in some more, so I'll take this and then just spin it around a little. And, and this is a nice little rock, so maybe, yeah, there's an asshole for filling there. There we go. So that's 
kind of roughly filled in. So if you go in, ah, wait a minute, there's a bit here I missed out. Another good reason why it's important to zipper in your scene at all angles, because from this angle it looks fine, and then this angle you can see a great big um, um, hole in the roof, which is not what we want. So we can just get another rock, maybe rotate it a bit and put one there and one there, and something to fill this this one. Just picking them at random. Rotate, place, rotate, and place. So, hmm. We can press G to get a nice overview. Uh, scroll down. Yeah, there's a gap here I'd like to fill in. So I'll extract from there and just place there. And one there. And maybe, yeah, one there. So, let's see what that looks like from the player's eye view. So if it comes into the cave, through the underground stream, looks up, he sees a nice rocky roof, and he can see through the sky. Now there's too many holes in that roof, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to place a large entity over the top to obscure most of them, but leave one or two for cracks of light to shine through. So, so I don't have to do that again. I'm going to save. Because I don't want to accidentally place down a large object and then levels my terrain or something. That would be unpleasant. So we'll save the level. And then we'll try to find a nice large object of a stony sort of texture that matches the stones we've already placed. So, new entity. Um, you've seen all these rocks. Um... Sarcophagus, possibly not. Uh, modular wall, too clean. Skull rock. Let's have a look at skull rock. Ooh. Ooh, nicey. This is interesting. Let's place him down here. And a close look at this guy. This actually could serve a very interesting narrative. If we placed a big skull rock on top of this, it will serve to obscure most of the light sources, leave a crack in the middle, and be a very imposing um, header for our mountain. So I will extract him, spin him around, and place him here, and then drag him up until he is where I want him. Now I'll have to be careful here because I have to make it look good from the floor. I also have to make it look good from inside the cave, so I can't have bits sticking through. Like this. Um, this would cause too much light to shine through at the back, so I'll bring it a bit further back because I don't want it overly imposing on the terrain. I just want it in the background, just kind of looming over the, the valley. So move them across a bit, using the green axes yeah so it covers the rocks yeah it leaves a few shining through this might have at one point been a waterfall which is nice and straight up now we need to fill in this hole here because that would be quite obvious to the player standing on this rock that there's um very obvious edge here so if we take this extract place down straight away with the shift held so we get another identical copy of it and then just kind of find a way for it to um, fill that gap in without dominating the scene so if you're placing down here because what I don't want the player to be able to do is to is to climb up um, and get on top because we don't want the player on top of here it's to keep them out um, but it's just to cover that hole in between the cave door and the the gap on top of the cave door. So from here it looks okay. Um, I can see a bit of contrast here, but it's not that obvious at this angle. So we'll save that 
and we'll press play and see what it looks like from a gamer's perspective. So I will save as a new file now because I want to go up one. So I'll go to 7.4. 7.3 being when I started placing the rocks. We'll save the level and then we shall test game. Now, while this is launching, I should point out that there is no lights yet in my scene. It's still using the standard dynamic scene lighting. And so it won't be as impressive as it will be eventually. All I'm testing for now is that you can't, um, you can't see too much out of that cave roof. I just want it with a little bit of cracks of light coming from the outside, but mostly a dark cave. Because we're going to get some nice lighting in there when we move on to... Um, the lighting section for now I just want the oh yes oh now that's nice I like this yes that's very nice let's make sure the key still works um, what we might get some torches up there some flickering torches to kind of um, highlight the skull so that would be a very good reason to set up a camp here to investigate further it's like what's this deep dark spooky cave so we'll swim through, swim, 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 into our cave, and there's cracks of light, but mostly it's dark. Oh yes. Now, I'd like to fill in those, because that's not right, but everything else seems okay. There's light coming through there, so we've got some patchwork to do, but this is where it takes a little bit more time of uh, trial and error just to get it perfect, to get it right. For example, I don't like this. I don't like that very straight line in the rock though. Um, and I don't like that where it cuts into the rock though. So all these are little tweaks that need to be made to just help the entities blend into each other and to create a smoother experience for the user. Um, contrasting textures like this is very obvious to see and it will break the illusion of immersion in the game. So I will exit the game here and I will go and resolve those small issues with the cave light. This may be a reason for the excessive light, the, the, um, the passage through the skull. We may have to block that off but there was this is what I saw, so if we just take this, place another one down, rotate slightly, and place it here, and use the widget to fan tune it where it wants to be. And that should block off that. We've got one there as well, so if I extract that and bring him across, and to block up that, give him a little rotate so it doesn't have too many similar angles. You just want to block off the light. Um, any here? Hmm. I think this needs something. It doesn't need much, just something. Just something to block off most of these because this is too many cracks in the roof. It's letting in too much light. So if we find something, maybe actually a modular wall. Um, assuming it's big enough. I can just place it, extract, use my 1 to 6 key, or in this case my 1 key, to bring it down flat, and then increase its scale along one axis to make it longer. No, in general then. And move the position. Well, actually, we can rotate it along its Y, so it's longer, and then move it into position over most of the cave, the holes in the cave. I just want a couple. So that leaves um, some here near the entrance where you might expect to find them, but none at the back where you probably wouldn't. Now, seems good. It doesn't matter too much about the back. Um, the only people seeing that is people that have escaped 
Uh, yeah, okay. Now what else I saw was inside the cave was this. Now, I'm just going to tweak this slightly so it's not such a straight line. The straight line didn't work too well. I didn't like it. Uh, so let's try rotating slightly. Let's try and get the curvature of the rock to create a smoother line with the curvature of the entity. Um, and this, move it back a bit so I don't have that very sharp thing there. Just want it in there, like so. No, there's still a tiny bit there, just a little bit more. I think this will bother me, so I'll move it back a little bit more. And that should be okay. I'm not entirely about that, but it's okay because it's a trick for this as well. If we take, um, let's say, this rock, hold shift and left click, and you have another one, place that down, grab it, and drag it down. You can use this to sort of hide jaggedy lines where entity meets terrain or entity meets entity because it's a nice dark texture. The darker the texture, the more it will hide, which is why this nice bright texture I've chosen for the cave is showing a lot of um, straight lines, whereas the nice dark textures hide them a lot better. Right, that can happen. Just grab another one. There's no loss. And when there's so much happening in the scene, the little widget tool, if you try and move it too quickly, just moves it. Like, for example, that one's running straight behind me. Um, there's no loss. It's just all part of the process. So I rotate him a bit more. There we go. Kind of hiding the lines more. Yeah. That should be okay. And uh, I'm going to put one the To extract, left click place, left click again. So I have two. And just drag him over here just to sort of obscure this and break it up a bit more like that you're not obstructing the path and it just hides that nasty horrible line so I'll come out of here I'll go back over here because I like to be in the nice opener and I will save and I will test Watching test level, preparing vegetation, initializing physics. Um, no baked light maps found, reverting to real time shadowing. We will cover light maps um, in a future video, and the entire scene will just pop as soon as those are introduced properly and you have nice lights. It, ha! My kettles fell off my chair. <laughs> oh, and there's grass in my tent. I'll have to get rid of that. Um, we'll come back to that. So, going into my cave. We've got a lot less light coming in. So that hole's been sealed. That's been sealed. We've got a bit of light coming in from small cracks. But it's mostly darkened. And that wall seems to have done the trick. So that's good. And there's no horrible jaggy lines over there. So we resolve that issue. That will call this cave on um, done. Um, I'm going to use it later. I'm going to maybe put a treasure chest in here or some torches or maybe an NPC. But for now, I'd say that's a done cave. And once the lights are in here and the light map's been set up, it'll look quite good. So if we leave our cave, come back out into the world, 
And there's one more thing I want to do before I end the video. And that's the sky. It's too bright. This is too bright for the scene that's being made because now I have a gigantic skull mountain and a hidden cave. This is a bit too sunshiny. So, if you want to change elements of the scene like that, if you hold down, um, no, not hold down, if you tap tab once, you will get some metrics for what's going on in your scene. You can still walk around and look around and the tabs will update, showing you things like the physics, um, shadows, rendering, sky water, miscellaneous. It shows you what's happening in your scene and what's taking resources and your FPS and how things are generally going. It's, it's quite a good way to gauge how efficient your scene is. If you press tab again, you'll lose control of your player, but you get more metrics to play with, and these can be adjusted. Now, I found myself not looking at the sky, so I press tab again to go back to your standard game view. This time I'll point at the sky, press tab twice, and up here in world settings, we have sky type, terrain type, and vegetation type. You click and hold where it says clear, you can choose a different type of sky. My particular favorite is sunset. And if you release whilst hovering over sunset, it will load in a new sky. Press tab, and then you can see, does this sky match my world? Now this is much more cloudy, it's a little darker, it's a little bit more what I wanted. Um, for this world as it's being built. If I didn't like it, I can just go back and choose um, Overcast. It's a bit darker, um, more clouds, it's um, more um, less light and happy, more misty and miserable. So you just gotta pick the sky which works best in the world you're trying to build. Um, Sometimes you'll see sky maps with an S, so sunset and S sunset. Now these types of skies have a dynamic cloud layer. And if you stand still and look up, you can see very subtly clouds moving overhead. Now that will take a little bit more system resources, but it will add a little touch of realism to your world. Also, this sky is amazing. I love this sky. This is the sky I'm going to have. This is like dark red brooding. It's... it's it's getting dark, it's getting creepy. So that's the sky I'm going to have. I could change the terrain, but I built the trees and the flowers with this terrain. So if I changed it now, it would look a bit strange. So I'm going to leave that. But you could, if you wanted to, by doing the same thing as you did with the sky, just clicking and holding, and then choosing something that you want. If you don't want, just go back up to the top, release, and then nothing else will change. We can go more into the shader settings and the... Um, a fog, brightness, radius, uh, vegetation, quality, quantity, terrain size. We can cover all this in the later tutorial if people want it. Um, but what I would suggest to do is just play with it. You'll learn more by playing with it than you could ever learn by listening to me waffle on about it. So, on that, I will finally exit the test game and I will save. And next time, we are going to look at either zones or the EBE system. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment about which one you'd like to see, then that's the one we'll do. So, bye for now.